والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداه أما بعد أيها الإخوة The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has likewise mentioned in a hadith that was collected by Imam Ibn Majah and was declared sahih by Sheikh Nasir the statement of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الناس اتقوا الله وأجملوا في الطلب فإن نفسا لن تموت حتى تستوفي رزقها وإن أبطع عنها فاتقوا الله وأجملوا في الطلب خذوا ما حل ودعوا ما حرم He mentions O oh mankind be good in your means of seeking sustenance for indeed a soul will not die until it has encompassed its risk, its provisions, even if it is slow. And so fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be good and beautiful in your means of seeking sustenance. خُذُوا ma hal, Take from that which is halal. وَدَعُوا ma harum, And leave alone what is haram. Take from what is halal and leave alone what is haram. Brothers and sisters, the affair has now become critical with many such that entering into every type of haram transaction, it starts off small and we start to justify some elements of what is haram. That is how it begins. Generally, alhamdulillah, we're generally halal, but there's this element here which yeah, you can't get around it. And then we build on from that. Just as we can't get around that, then we can't also avoid this other thing that we used to avoid. And then slowly but surely, every type of haram transaction, we can see an angle that permits it or makes it permissible. And so we enter into ribawiyat, ribawi transactions. We enter into those transactions that Allah Azza wa Jal has waged war against those who partake in them. We enter into various dubious types of trade, which if not outright haram, then there is no doubt that they are closer to being outright haram than being halal in any way. And so we now enter into all types of fraudulent transactions. And we seek to participate in what we see is bringing or appears to be bringing fast books and fast wealth to people that are partaking in it with little effort. And so now we enter into and wish to participate in cryptocurrency, buying and selling and dealing with it. Quick money, quick turnover, big gains, large dividends. What is the ruling of this type of transaction? Who cares? Who cares, Yahi? It's a transaction, khalas. I don't really want to even look into what is related to the true hukum, what is really involved in it. What do the ahkam and what does the deen say concerning this type of transaction and what it involves? I don't care really. Oh, but we're interested in anyone who may appear to have written something in its favor. Very interested. Memorized all of its arguments. Every type of fraudulent transaction now becomes fair seeming. Because I'm just sick and tired of sitting here and not making any money. Sick and tired of working in a dead end job that doesn't seem to be going anywhere, even though it is providing you halal risk. As slow as that risk may be, it's tayyib. But we're sick of that which is tayyib. We need something more. We need an increase. And so brothers and sisters, 
Remember the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Indeed Allah is tayyib and will not accept other than that which is tayyib. Likewise, this wealth that a person consumes, this wealth, brothers and sisters, when one's body is nourished by way of it, then know that the Prophet wasallam has said that the hellfire has more right to it. And how you nourish yourself, you nourish your wife, you nourish your children, you nourish your friends and relatives even, from that which you know is clearly haram. What type of natija and outcome do you believe you're going to have in year, years later? Both palms are upon one's head. Ya laytani, ya laytani. Woe is me and if only. And we're wondering why there doesn't seem to be any baraka within the household. And everything I do doesn't seem to work out. Listen to this hadith that we'll mention in conclusion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullu jasadin nubita min suhtin فَالنَّارُ أَوْلَى بِهِ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that every body, يعني every physical body that is nourished by suht, by misappropriated wealth, then the fire has more right to it. Just as the one who misappropriates the wealth of the orphan, Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us of his, his affair. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ الْيَتَامَى ظُلْمًا إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارًا وَسَيَسْلَوْنَ سَعِيرًا The one who misappropriates the wealth of the orphan, orphan oppressively, he does nothing but consume into his stomach nar, hellfire, and he shall certainly enter the burning flames, the fierce flames. Brothers and sisters, pay attention to this affair. It is spreading. Don't become and fall prey to it. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal in relation to how you're seeking wealth. Your term in the dunya is short. Your sustenance will not change. What has been written has been written. Seek it beautifully. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa akhri da'wana. الحمد لله رب العالمين